Michael Sam. Uh, I'm a I'm a football player and I'm gay. Is this a huge deal? I understand that it is, but my purpose and focus is right now is playing football. All right, folks. Uh, Michael Sam, of course, uh, coming out uh, over the weekend as a uh, gay college football player who will enter the NFL draft in April, and uh, joining us now to talk about uh, the. Uh, the, uh, I don't want to say firestorm, but it's been a, a firestorm of media coverage, certainly, that this has created, is Ben Jacobs, reporter for the Daily Beast, who has written a column on this. Hello, uh, Ben. Hi, Steve. Good How to, you good to talk to you. Me, my, my pleasure. All right, so the Daily Beast, and I, I, you know, I, I read your column, and I don't see much mention specifically of, of a comparison to Jackie Robinson, but so I just want to ask you off the top before we get into the discussion. The Daily Beast um, said that Michael Sam is the NFL's gay Jackie Robinson. Do you buy into that? Well, I, yeah, that's the headline that he's, he's the first openly gay uh, professional athlete in a major sport. But there's no, uh, you know, and Jackie Robinson was the was the you know first African American to integrate Major League Baseball. But no, I, I understand that. But do you experience. but do you, do you draw an analogy? Do you do you see in any way, shape, or form that uh, that uh, he is uh, Michael Sam is? you know, the equivalent in any way of uh, Jackie Robinson. Certainly there are analogies that can be made to Jackie Robinson. I mean, How so? Very isn't precise in terms of the fact that he, you know, provided he gets drafted and takes the field, uh, you know, will be the first openly gay professional athlete in a major sport in the United States of America. But, you know, there have been plenty of closeted uh, gay athletes before who've had very mixed experiences in locker rooms. That, For example, there are stories about... Vince Lombardi being a very tolerant coach, but Tommy Lasorda being being less than tolerant. But it's, I think, in terms of the role as uh, gay and lesbians uh, play in the you know in sort of the the movement for you know gay and lesbian rights in the United States, that it's an important landmark. It's certainly you know different than Jackie Robinson, but it has certain analogies as he's you know he's going to be. Well, to, 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 to me, with all due respect, Ben, I mean, to me, you know, when, Ro when, when Rosie O'Donnell, who's, uh, you know, pretty much a billionaire and could do anything she wants uh, at the time she couldn't get married, uh, compares herself to, calls herself the gay Rosa Parks, uh, it diminishes the heck out of it. Uh, when, when, when Jesse Jackson says that uh, um, uh, the Trayvon Martin is, is Emmett Till, a, a kid who was wrestled from his bed in the middle of the night by racists and, and, and given a horrific death uh, and dumped in the river, uh, it diminishes what happened to Emmett Till and what Jackie Robinson went through. You know, I mean, the, 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 the on-the-field violence, getting hit with the pitches and all, the, the, the verbal abuse, the staying in different restaurants, the drinking from different fountains. The, I mean, I mean, go on and on and on and on and on. To, to bring his name up and say that this young man is in any way, shape, or form like Jackie Robinson just diminishes, in my view, what Jackie Robinson stood for and what he went through. Jackie Robinson certainly went through a lot, but I think the fact that this is a milestone and a landmark step, that just because the comparison I don't think is intended to be exact or is exact, that just because Michael, uh, Michael Sam would be the first uh, openly gay professional athlete doesn't mean he'd go through the same barriers and obstacles that Jackie Robinson went through, but it's still, it's still a landmark, it's still a milestone, it's still a first, and that, that's a good and discreet comparison, that the comparisons don't have to be, have to be precise and exact, that he doesn't, that, you know, Michael Sam may not deal with, uh, you know, racism from the Philadelphia Phillies, may not deal with the Eddie Sankeys of the world, but it's still an object, it's still a milestone and a landmark, and it's still a first in professional sports. Well, to me, it's like calling every anti-Semite Hitler. I mean, I, I just, I just, so it just diminishes what Hitler did, and I, you know, I just don't get it. But um, let, let's talk about. Uh, you have um, uh, the NFL Players Association executive director uh, today blasting a group of anonymous NFL general managers and executives who reportedly believe that uh, Sam has uh, damaged his draft uh, status, his stock, uh, by announcing uh, that he's gay. I, I have to believe that. There's a method to his madness. I mean, we're talking about, yeah, defensive player of the year or, or, or co-defensive player of the year in his division, uh, which is a, a very good division. No, don't take that away from anybody. But here's a guy who's a middle rounder at best, um, you know, and, and here he knows. He had to know that he is going to scare away many, many teams. If for no other reason, why would the team need the headache 
of a middle rounder who's not a superstar, who may not make that much of a difference, who doesn't stand out in any way uh, more than the guy they could pick instead, why would a team want the circus, the media circus focus and attention that this will bring on a team? Well, I think that there are definitely the teams have media have concerns over the media coverage, but you can draw a comparison to uh, to another middle round defensive player, probably a little bit better last year, Manti Tia, with the with the catfish team. That there's certainly going to be attention in a media circus immediately around it, but it's you know it's a story with no second act. That it's a big deal now. It's a landmark announcement now that he's that he's coming out of the closet. But after his first game, it becomes less of an issue. You don't. You really believe it? Because was it less of an issue with Jackie Robinson? I mean, you think this is going to go away after he takes the field? You don't think if he's if he's pulled, if he's not played, uh, if if there's a a controversy in the locker room or a perceived controversy in the locker room, or maybe this guy perceives a controversy in the locker room? I mean, I, I mean, you don't you don't think this scares teams away at all? You you think this is over and done once he takes the field? I think once he takes the field, that I think it creates issues with the draft, that I think, but once he takes the field, that this is someone who was a leader of the locker room in Missouri and had very good, you know, was, came out, you know, came with the support of his coach, of his teammates at Missouri, at Missouri, that this is the type of issue that I think should, you know, should fade away as, you know, he's the first, that they'll be second, they'll be third, you know, that for what a big deal Jackie Robinson went through, that, then you had Larry Doby, then you had Hank Thompson, then you had Monty Irwin. But you're that, going back uh, to Jackie Robinson. Let me tell you something. This, this guy uh, announced to his college teammates that he was gay, and he suffered absolutely no ill effects. None. Zero zilch zippo, according to him. So, I mean, again, it, this Jackie Robinson in the same breath as this kid is abhorrent. I, 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 I think that that's going to, or that there's certainly that this is a courageous step to take in terms of being a trail pathblazer or professional athletes. That there's certainly significant difference between what uh, gay and lesbian Americans are going have got What What are they going and, through? What are gay and lesbian Americans going through? Marriage? I mean, my God, Jackie, the, what blacks were going through when Jackie Robinson came up, there's absolutely no compare. That's what I don't get. That's what I don't understand, how you diminish, how the left is diminishing. What, what blacks went through then, what Jackie Robinson went through then, it killed him. It brought him an early grave in the minds of his family and most people. I mean, I, I just don't get the comparison. I, I, think they compare, I think there's a comparison that you still have you know, legal discrimination in terms of being able to fire someone based on their sexual orientation. That it's still, it's still a different thing. That just because of the fact that you know, that discrimination may not be as extreme or pervasive, doesn't mean that there still isn't discrimination, and that you know, that it isn't as historic for Michael Sam Step. But this was, you know, a first moment, uh, historic moment that it's certainly happening in different ways and different steps. But because there's similarities, it doesn't mean Michael Sam is Jackie Robinson. It doesn't mean that every step in their lives has to be the same or shouldn't be the same, but that he's the first openly gay player in the same way that uh, Jackie Robinson was the first African-American to break the color barrier in, the, in 1947. But this is not, you know, explicitly comparing any other aspects, but it's a first, it's a milestone, it's a landmark, and it's noteworthy for that. We're talking to Ben Jacobs, a reporter for the Daily Beast. Well, it's actually not the first. As you point out, there's a soccer player. Uh, also, uh, the basketball player who uh, came out, uh, Jason Collins, although he wasn't with the team when he came out, and his career is probably over because he was a, a journeyman player who uh, didn't have any real value to a team, they decided. Uh, so he's not the, the very first. He's the first in this position. He's the first in the NFL. Uh, first but, in a major team sport, that in terms of baseball, football, basketball. Well, yeah, well, again, Colin, you know, again, with, uh, with uh, Collins, who, um, you know, was a free agent, wasn't technically on a team. Um, yeah. So let me ask you, let me ask you this. Um, uh, you know, here's a situation where, you know, Jonathan Vilma backtracked on remarks that he had made previously. Uh, I heard those remarks yesterday, uh, and then he, he, he went on some shows yesterday taking back what he had said. I guess he was pressured to do so. You know, but he talked about, and, and this is, you know, this is a, a legitimate concern. I mean, I would think, uh, and I've heard many people express this, and I've expressed this, if you're an NFL player, Sure, you've played with gay players, but you don't know that you're playing with gay players. So you don't know that the guy standing next to you naked uh, while you're naked might be attracted to you. So there's no tension. But if you know, if a guy makes a point 
to say, I'm attracted to men. Uh, what, so what if some players feel that they're uncomfortable showering next to that person, undressing next to that person, just as they would do a being uncomfortable doing it next to a woman? I mean, could you understand that? And what kind of, how would you solve that problem? I, I think just, uh, just get over it. Get over it. So it's incumbent upon the majority of people here, uh, the people who are there, heterosexuals, to get over it. Like the military says to the soldiers who feel uncomfortable, leave if you don't like it. So we have to change everything to accommodate one or two people on a team who it's perfect. So there's no tolerance on your part. No tolerance on your anything. part for I the straight player, right? Next to the same guys they'd be showering next to at any other point. That they're, that I, you know, that it's still... It's still a bunch of naked guys taking a shower together. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what's going on. Players have been on teams where they've known that they've been with. You know, known that teammates were gay. That a number of uh, players have talked about. You know, that they've played with teammates who have been gay and haven't been openly publicly out. And it hasn't caused any real issues. That if you look back to this is something. Well, you don't know. Well, I mean, you don't know that. Let's say. How do you? Since we don't know that. Since we don't know who the players are, and we don't know how the team handled it then how do we know that some players who might have been uncomfortable were accommodated in return for not saying anything? How do we know that? Well, I think there are very clear examples going back that there was uh, the NFL Network, for example, ran a special on Jerry Smith, who was a Pro Bowl tight end for the Washington Redskins in the late 1960s, who was one of uh, several closet gays on the Washington Redskins, and the team sort of had a sense of who it was. Dave Copay was another on the team. And uh, a player actually complained to Vince Lombardi, who said, you know, if you complain again, it's your cut. That incident took a very All right, that's one, that's one incident. But if we're assuming that since that time there's been more, uh, and, and we don't know who the players are, we don't know how it's been handled. Now we will know how it's handled on the team that he goes to, because it's going to be an issue. And questions will be asked, and policies will be instituted. And you are so lacking in tolerance for someone who might, for religious reasons, for, for humility reasons, feel uncomfortable knowing that the naked guy in the shower next to them is attracted to men. You say, get over it. Well, that, doesn't that sound very intolerant to you? It sounds perfectly talented. This is part of the basic workplace. That they're, you know, the really? Na what other workplace are they naked? Are gays and, and straights naked together, sir? Uh, that would be the only, that would be the, one of the few workplaces I can think about where naked men shower together, but that's an inherent part of your workplace. You're showering with oh, naked Oh, men. so then it's incumbent upon straight men to just get over it and not feel uncomfortable. All right, I mean, unfortunately, that's the liberal mindset and, uh, you know, that's the politically correct mindset, but uh, I believe that uh, an employee uh, has a right uh, not to feel so sexual tension, happen, not to feel that he has to shower. What if there are women? Would you say that if a woman made a team as a kicker, should she be showering with men? There are women, there are women, there are women who come into the locker room as sports writers that... You know, I, and most men cover watch. and most men cover up with a towel when they see a woman. Some do, some don't. So what about the ones who cover up with a towel? Should you tell them get over it? Should there be a law if rule they against? Want to cover up with a towel. If a player wants to go in the shower covering up with a towel, he's more than welcome to. I'm really not sure how the big society societal issues in this are about. You know, people about random football players showering together. They're not random football players, sir. You, you want to bring it to a workplace environment. All of a sudden, you got... Would you, how about in the bathroom here at my studio or where you work? If, if women started just going to the bathroom with men uh, and people felt uncomfortable, you would say, tell all of them, get over it? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether the bathroom policy at your workplace is single sex or unit. Or <laughs> men, there's I a mean, men's room and a woman's room, sir. Then I would imagine the men use the men's room and the women That's use the women's room. That's right. And if it changed tomorrow, do you think people would have a right to say they're uncomfortable if they were uncomfortable? Sure or would they be told, get over it? I'm sure people would have conversations about it, but I don't really see the comparison between. You the, don't. Okay. All right. Well, I can't think of another. I can't think of another job where men and women sh would shower together, or now where men who are attracted to men shower together. Um, so that's why I'm bringing that up. But all right, look, we're not going to solve this, but uh, I just think it's very intolerant of the left, as it usually is, uh, for them to tell anybody who do, who is uncomfortable with something based on. You know, real, true, uh, uh, legitimate grounds to get over it. Um, no, that no, that, no, that doesn't sound like tolerance to me. What's that? I'm not, I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure what I'm not sure what the legitimate grounds are that you're. You don't know what legitimate are, grounds these are. These well, are, then, sir, I don't know how to explain together. it to you. If people feel uncomfortable because all of a sudden a man says I'm attracted to men, and then I'm showering naked with that guy because he made a point to come out and say I'm attracted to men, I might feel uncomfortable. You can't understand that. It's, it seems I'm not. I'm not really saying he's attracted to men. He's not saying he's attracted to you. All right. Well, then you know what? Put women in the showers with men because uh, there's no guarantee they'll be attracted to that particular woman or man. I mean, where do you draw that? Look, this is silly. Uh, ben Jacobs, reporter for the Daily Beast. I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. Thank you. See, folks, it's the left. It's the left. They demand complete and utter tolerance. If you're not for gay marriage, if you're not for abortion, if you're not for this or that, you're this, you're a name, you're a homophobe, you're anti-woman, you're, you know, you're war on women. But if you, if you say to them, well, how about respecting how I feel? Oh, no. <laughs> you agree with us, so you're a name. That's how the left operates. This man could see no issue and, in fact, said to anyone who might feel uncomfortable for, again, whatever reason, get over it. That's the answer from the left, from, from this leftist, from this man on the left. Totally unfair, in my opinion. Steve Malsberg Show, one final segment left in the hour on Newsmax Television. The Steve Malsberg Show.